Kettle knocked out around uh, 450, four and a okay, quarter so. barrels. But we had six brew kettles, and we had we made a, a brew every 29 minutes, right on the clock. It went right on down the line, and we'd make uh, it came out to about 49 brews a day. And every day we put out that amount of beer. And if we had a interruption and he, here, then we had to make the interruption all the way down on all the brews because that set set you back. See? Um, and and you focused on process or quality control or? Well, I was in charge of, of all make the brewing schedules and mm -hmm. projecting what we needed in the future. And I worked with uh, Frank Benz. You know, he was in. Uh, he he knew what how much. They had to have of a certain brand at a certain time, and I had to fit that in the schedule so it would be ready in time. Um, we had very strict aging rules. We couldn't, we couldn't, uh, like uh, our Ondecker had to be uh, two months old. Mm -hmm. And perhaps we could put out in 30 some odd days, I couldn't remember now. But we had strict rules. You had to go to the, get an act of Congress to cheat one day on aging. They were very strict, Paps was. Um, uh, we talked a little bit before about the Ondecker, but the Ondecker was just all two-row and it, and imported hops. Right, and, and we had, later on we brewed part, uh, part corn, but it, 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 it was not as high a percentage of corn as Paps was. It was... 20% uh, maybe? Huh? 20% maybe? I, I think it was 20%. But oh. the only reason we put corn in it to make it a little more stable because uh, 